Well, now it's the time in the course that you've been waiting for, because in this section, we are going to help you figure out what your strongest intuitive gift is. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to look at four of the most common ways people have of being intuitive. And these four most common ways involve being able to know information, being able to see intuitively, being able to hear intuitively, and also being able to feel on an emotional level intuitively. So let's get started with a deeper explanation of each of those four ways of being intuitive. First off is feeling things. A common name for this type of intuition is clairsentience. And it simply translates as clear feeling. And what clairsentience is, is it's the ability to intuit information by sensing the emotions. And actually the primary purpose of this type of intuition relates to body spirit communication. So everyone has this ability and the reason that we need it is so that you, the high vibration spiritual being can listen to your physical body, listen to your body personality and understand how it's responding to the situations that you are putting it in. Now, a lot of people are also able to use this ability to tune in to how other people are feeling. So if you can instantly have a sense of how your friend is feeling on an emotional level without them telling you how they feel, then that is your clairsentience. Another common word that we use these days to describe people with this ability is that we call them an empath. And there are challenges associated with being an empath. So for example, if you are somebody who really does not enjoy being in a crowded place because you sense the energy of all of the other people that's in the crowded place and you feel completely overwhelmed. Well, that can be due to your clairsentience being open and it can be due to you sucking in um, or being vulnerable to the energy of all of those other people. And so it's important when you have this ability of clairsentience to learn how to be in control of it and to learn how not to get affected by all of those foreign energies. Now, next up is an intuitive ability called clair cognizance and that simply translates to mean clear knowing or knowing things another word for it might be accessing your inner wisdom accessing your higher knowledge um, so this is a way that people have where they're able to instantly know their intuitive information they don't know why they know and they don't know how they know, but it's just that sense that you have about, I just know it. I just know this to be true. It's, it's instant. It's not based on logic. Uh, it's not something that you need to figure out. When somebody else asks you, well, what information is that based on? You might not be able to give them an answer but you just have that sense of knowing. So that's your knowingness. Being able to intuitively know. Another one is clairvoyance. Clairvoyance means clear seeing, the ability to see as spirit. And 
if you have your clairvoyance, then you're, you have great clarity. You have the ability to see your truth. You have the ability to see yourself clearly. You have the ability to see your life and everything in it from a spiritual perspective. And it also gives you the power to be able to see energy. So, for example, using your clairvoyance, you might be able to see the electromagnetic energy field that surrounds all people, all animals and all plants. It's called the aura. Having your clairvoyance allows you to see auras and other forms of energy, for example, out of body beings such as spirit guides and angels or deceased loved ones. So your clairvoyance is the ability to receive intuitive information in a visual way. And then finally, we have hearing things. And hearing things relates to being able to receive intuitive information through sound, through voices. And so, for example, it may be that your spirit guides communicate with you vocally and you can actually hear them talking to you. It might be that you could hear the angelic realm, the beautiful music of the angelic realm. So those are two examples of intuitive hearing. A common example might be that you hear a warning in a, in a situation that helps you to, um, helps you to, to get away, for example. Now, there are different types of intuitive ability that relate to hearing things. The main one that we're going to look at in this course is clear audience, and that means clear hearing. And that specifically relates to verbal types of communication that you might hear from your spirit guides or your angels. Now, it is also possible to hear your higher self talking to you and it's similar but we refer to that as the inner voice so the inner voice is when you hear yourself a higher aspect of yourself communicating with you through language and clear audience is when you might hear for example your guides or your angels communicating with you through language. So let's take a look. We're going to move on now and we're going to do a quiz to find out which of these is your strongest ability. So I have 10 questions for you and each question you have a choice of five different answers A, B, C, D or E. So I will invite you now to go and grab a pad and a pen so that you can write your answers down. So once again, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper and get ready to fill out the answers to this 10 question quiz, which is going to help you become clearer about your main intuition type. And we're going to be looking at clairvoyance or clear seeing, claircognizance or clear knowing, clairaudience or clear hearing, and clairsentience or clear feeling. So here's the very first question. So question number one, please answer A, B, C, D or E. I make important decisions based on A, gut feelings and comfort level, B, 
a sense of inner knowing. C. My ability to visualize the best outcome. D. A trusty inner voice that always guides me in the right direction. E. A logical review of the facts. So once again, do you make important decisions based on your gut feelings and comfort level? Do you make them based on a sense of inner knowing, which would be B, the gut feelings would be A, or C, your ability to visualize the best outcome, D, a trusty inner voice that guides you in the right direction, or just perhaps a voice <laughs> that speaks to you and guides you um, in the direction to take or a logical review of the facts. So A, gut feelings, B, inner knowing, C, visualizing the outcome, D, a voice that guides you, or E, a logical review of the facts. Second question, answer A to E. I most commonly experience my intuition as feelings and emotional sensations, that's A, a kind of certainty or knowing, that's B, and C is visions and flashes of images, or D, voices in my head, and then finally E, I'm not sure that I experience my intuition. So once again, the answers to the question, I most commonly experience my intuition as, the choices are A, feelings and emotional sensations, B, a kind of certainty or knowing, C, visions and flashes of images, D, voices in my head, and E, I'm not sure that I experience my intuition. So, do you most commonly experience your intuition as A, feelings, B, knowing, C, visions, D, voices, or E, you're not really sure. Question number three. When working on a project, I tend to A, feel the general consensus of the team and move forward with that. B, know what needs to be done and do it. C. See the results I want to attain and direct my actions to achieve them. D. Hear myself presenting the results and what my boss will say in response. E. Analyze the data, plan the course of action and organize my time to get it done. Okay, so once again, question three is, when working on a project, I tend to feel the consensus in the room, feel what it is that the team is en masse together agreeing on and then move forward with that. Or B, know what needs to be done and do it. C, see the results I want to attain and direct my actions to achieve them. D, hear myself present the results and what my boss will say in response, or E, analyze the data, plan the course of action, and organize my time to get it done. So once again, A is about feeling your way forward. B is about just knowing what to be done. C is about visualizing the project and the results. D is hearing, hearing the outcome hearing what your boss will say, hearing what you will say, and E is being analytical about the project. Question four. When I am not well, I feel my body's symptoms and emotions and soothe them as best I can. Or B, I know what's wrong, and what I need to do to get better. 
C. I visualize the area of discomfort and send healing colors there. D. I listen to my guidance regarding how to treat my ailment. And E. I gather advice by visiting the doctor and researching the symptoms on the internet. So here we go once again. Question four. When I am not well, this is what I tend to do. A. I feel the symptoms in my body, I feel my emotional responses to them, and I soothe them as best I can. Or B, I know what's wrong, and I know what I need to do to get better. Or C, I visualize the area of discomfort and I send healing colors there. Or D, I listen to my guidance regarding how to treat my ailment. And E, I gather advice by visiting the doctor and researching the symptoms on the internet. So once again, when I'm unwell, the way that I tune in and, and, and get better is by feeling my way, by knowing what to do, C, by visualization, D, by listening and hearing the way forward, and E, by consulting with the experts. Question five. When I meet a romantic partner, my first impression is usually A, how I feel emotionally and sexually towards them. B, a kind of knowing. This is the one for me. C, I can see us together as a couple. D. I have a voice inside telling me whether they are a good match or not. E. I want to find out all about them, where they work, what they like, and then decide if it's a match. So once again, question five is, when I meet a romantic partner, my first impression is usually how I feel emotionally and sexually towards them. B, a kind of knowing, this is the one for me. C, that I can see us together as a couple. D, I have a voice inside me telling me whether they're a good match or not. And E, I want to find out all about them, where they work, what they like, and then decide if it's a match. So when you meet a romantic partner, do you Notice how you feel about them. Know how you feel about them. S picture yourself together. P picture yourselves together. Listen to the voice inside that guides you about whether it's a good match, or set about doing some research to discover whether this person matches up with you or not. Question six. I determine if I want to be friends with somebody by A. Tuning into their emotions and sensing how they feel. B. Knowing who they are and what they like. C. Seeing the truth about them. D. Listening to their interests and taking my cues from that. E weighing up the pros and cons based on my experiences with them. Once again, if so I determine if I want to be friends with someone by A, tuning into their emotions and sensing how they are feeling. B, knowing, knowing all about them, knowing who they are, knowing what they like. C, seeing the truth about them. D, listening to their interests and taking my cues from that. Or E, weighing up the pros and cons based on my experiences with them. So A, feeling things about them. B, knowing things about them. C, seeing things about them. D, hearing things about them. And E, figuring out, figuring it out. Seven. When communicating with someone who might be lying, I tune into how we each are feeling. Are they nervous? Am I uncomfortable? That's A. 
B. What I know to be true versus what they are telling me. C. How things appear and then seeing if that matches my intuition. D. What I am hearing and then intuiting in terms of what sounds right. And E. What makes most sense given the evidence. So when communicating with someone who might be lying, I tune into A, how we are each feeling. Are they nervous? Am I uncomfortable? B, what I know to be true versus what they are telling me. C, comparing how things appear and then seeing if that matches my intuition. D, what I'm hearing and then intuiting what sounds right. I tune into what I'm hearing and then I intuit what sounds right. Or E, what makes most sense given the evidence. So to see if somebody's lying, you would do it on a feeling basis, a knowing basis, a seeing basis, a hearing basis, or an intellectual basis. Question eight. When somebody asks me a question, I sense the answer in my belly on an emotional or gut level. That's A. B. I tune into the top of my head and let the answer come to me. C. I look with my inner vision at the circumstances and possible answers. D. I ask for guidance and I usually hear what my response is before I say it. C. I consult my intellect and I give a logical response. So question eight is when someone asks me a question, I A, sense the answer in my belly on an emotional or gut level, or B, I tune in to the top of my head and let the answer come to me, or C, I look with my inner vision at the circumstances and possible answers, D, I ask for guidance and usually I hear what my response is before I say it, or C, I consult my intellect and give a logical response. So you get the way this goes now. So A, is you sensing the answer? Are you feeling it that way? B, are you knowing it? C, are you seeing it? D, are you hearing it? And E, are you weighing it up? using your intellectual brain. Question nine. So question nine is, when I bring to mind something new that I want to create in my life, I A, sense how I will feel when I have it, know how it will improve my life, that's B, C, I see it in my mind's eye until it's clear, D, I hear a voice encouraging me to move forward. And E, I figure out the best way to get what I want. So once again, question nine is when I bring to mind something new that I want to create in my life, I A, sense how I will feel when I have it. B, I know how it will improve my life. C, I see it in my mind's eye until it's clear. So I visualize it. Or D, I hear a voice encouraging me to move forward. And then finally E, I figure out the best way to get what I want. So once again, question nine is when I bring to mind something new that I want to create, I A, I sense it in terms of how it will feel. B, I just, I kind of know. C, I see it in my mind's eye. D, I hear a voice that encourages me. Or E, I figure it out. And finally, question 10. When I remember places I have visited, I tend to recall A, how I felt when I was there. B, all the familiar things that I know about it. C, what it looked like, all the sights, the people, the colors. D, the sounds that characterized it, and E, details of the trip, such as what went wrong and my travel itinerary. So when I remember the places I've visited, I tend to recall A, how I felt when I was there, B, 
all the familiar things that I know about it. C, what it looked like, all the sights, the people and the colours. D, the sounds that characterised it. And E, the details of the trip, such as what went wrong and my travel itinerary. So when you remember places of you visit, that you visited, do you recall them in a feeling way, in a knowing way? Do you have visual memories or can you hear the sounds or do you just remember in a logical fashion what you did and where you went? So now we're going to pause and give you a moment to add up whether you mostly got A's, B's, C's, D's or E's. Do that now. Out of the 10 questions, count up your A's, count up your B's, count up your C's, your D's and your E's. I'll give you a, a little bit longer and then if you need to pause the video in order to finish counting, then you'll be able to do that too. Okay, are you, are you ready? Did you add up all of your A's? See how many out of 10 were A's? How many were B's? C's, D's and E's. Well, assuming that you've had enough time to count up and get a score for your A's to your E's, we will move on. So A related to feeling things, A related to clairsentience. Remember that's the ability where you intuit information through on an emotional level, through a feeling level. You know, you're good at telling how people are feeling without them explaining or saying anything to you. That's your clairsentience. And if this is one of your stronger abilities, you may experience some challenges by feeling overwhelmed by other people's energies. And so your main challenge is actually learning how to own your own space. So clairsentience is feeling things. So if you got mostly A, that means that your strongest intuitive ability is clairsentience. Clairsentience is intuitive feeling, the ability to tune into feelings and emotions. It allows you to be aware of how you or somebody else is feeling. And actually, most people use their clairsentience on a daily basis without even realizing. So if you scored the highest in this ability, then you may already be using your clairsentience to tune into yourself and others. Or did you get mostly bees? Mostly bees is about knowing things. Remember that is the ability to tune into your higher guidance, tune into your inner knowing by, by just by simply knowing your answers without question. So that's claircognizance. It's intuitive knowing. It's when you tune into your divine wisdom, when you enter a state of stillness and instantly know your spiritual information, when you can recognize the truth with no need for external information, logic or reason. You know without any doubt what you know. 
So if you scored the highest in claircognizance in Bs, then you may have lots of experiences that you can recall where you just knew something was true without how, knowing how you knew it. So mostly Bs, then claircognizance is your strongest intuitive ability. Seeing things, so this is clairvoyance now, your visual intuition, the ability to see energy around people and objects and even tune into spirit. So A related to feeling things, A related to clairsentience. Remember that's the ability where you intuit information through on an emotional level, through a feeling level. You know, you're good at telling how people are feeling without them explaining or saying anything to you. That's your clairsentience. And if this is one of your stronger abilities, you may experience some challenges by feeling overwhelmed by other people's energies. And so your main challenge is actually learning how to own your own space. So clairsentience is feeling things. And then finally, hearing things. And we kind of mixed up here a bit of a blend between the Claire audience and the inner voice. Um, so Claire audience is being able to hear people other than yourself. And the inner voice is being able to hear yourself, you, the spiritual being, communicating with you. And I tend to think that the inner voice is uh, maybe a little bit more common. We all have an inner voice. So mostly D, then your strongest ability is your clairaudience or tuning or tuning into your inner voice. Uh, it's more of an auditory type of experience for you. And so Claire audience includes the ability to hear spiritual phenomena such as spirit guides, angels or deceased loved ones. And if you're using your Claire audience to tune in, then it just sounds like voices talking to you or music playing. A similar ability is your inner voice. And like I said, the difference is the inner voice is where you're able to listen to your higher self providing you with guidance, whereas clairaudience is you're able to listen to beings that are other than yourself. So the inner voice sounds just like you, and whereas clairaudience sounds like somebody else. So if you scored mostly D, then you may be tuning in to your inner voice or your Claire audience. Now, on the other hand, if you mostly scored E, then what that's pointing to is that you are operating mostly from your intellect. And while the intellect is the strongest aspect of your physical body, it is a great tool. It helps us to do all sorts of things. Unfortunately, it can get in the way of accessing intuition and intuitive abilities are more powerful than the intellect. They're of a much higher vibration. They allow you to access 
multidimensional information in a non-linear form, whereas the intuition is very linear. And they relate to you, the spirit, not just to your body. So, I mean, don't beat yourself up if your answer was mostly ease. Most people do experience the world exclusively through this aspect. And, um, you know, like I mentioned, though, unfortunately, it can get in the way of intuitive abilities, making you doubt or ignore them. So if you scored mainly ease, it doesn't mean that you're not intuitive. It just means that right now you're bypassing that, that you're, you're operating from your intellect and that learning how to bypass your intellect is your current challenge and also the key to accessing your intuitive abilities.